Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video we will discuss Deep Code question 382 that says linked list random node. So here in this question you are given the one linked list with a head pointer and you need to generate a random node from it every time. So every time for a get random calls you need to generate a random node from the list you are given. And one thing to note here is each node must have same probability of being chosen. So yeah, each node has the same probability uh, to get a card in the get random call. So further, these are the implementation classes of the solution class and one yeah, get random function. So yeah, that's how this code uh, uh, you need to code here based on these specifications. So yeah, if you take a look at this first example, so here there would be one call for the solution so that your head pointer get initialized and afterwards uh, you will get some uh, get random calls. Okay. So yeah, uh, uh, our get random initial return one, then three, then two, then again two, then three. Uh, so this is how randomly we are selecting elements from the linked list. Okay. So uh, the first thing I would like to tell you uh, that since here uh, each node must have same probability of being chosen, you have to take this cat in this mind. So uh, let us let me tell that uh, if there you you think of something like this. So let's say you have. Uh, something like nodes like this one two three and four and instead of getting a random call making a random call what you decide uh, you decide to give output something like this in an ordered manner like one two three four one two three four so you thought something like this that instead of taking any random thing what we can simply do is uh, for each get random call we will uh, they, we will uh, give the output in an ordered fashion like uh, firstly, we give this output for the first random call, this first random call, then we give this output for second random call, for this third random call, and this output for the fourth random call, again this output for the fifth random call. So this is how, if you think that uh, you will give output in a sequential order, then you will get here wrong answer, if you try to uh, do something like this. So uh, it it is must that your answer should be in random fashion, but each node should have same probability of uh, being chosen. Okay, things are clear. So uh, making a random call is uh, is necessary. So now, uh, also uh, also in today's video, I am using a new style of uh, explaining you. I have pre-written pre the questions and the points that we have to discuss in this video. So this is something new that I am trying to with the, the explanation part. So yeah, guys, if you find this helpful and you find it easy to understand in this way, then make sure you let me know in the comment section. Okay, so now. Uh, uh, till now, you, we have understand that uh, we need something. Uh, we need to get random value, random values each time. Okay. So how do we how do we get random value uh, for each time? So let's say if you have up till n elements and you need to choose something uh, from this uh, randomly, then how do we get? See, there is one random function. Uh, uh, in that is the this is the inbuilt random function in C++ so similarly inbuilt random function are then in all the programming languages and let's say you want to get uh, uh, from n elements then what you can simply do is you can simply make uh, a modulus of what a modulus of n right so uh, by taking modulus of n what you will get you will get answer from uh, all the answers from 0 to n minus 1 okay got it so if you take let's say uh, let's say n is equal to 5 then you can get all the random answer from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. If you do this, rand modulus n. Okay, simple, uh, simply got it. So yeah, we will be doing the same thing here. So what we can do is, we can store all the possible outcome in a vector like this. Vector of size n with an index 0 up till n minus 1. Okay store all the outputs and pick one now each element must have equal probability this thing is we need to keep in mind so yeah uh, for that what we will do is see this is this would be our code here okay so here in this code what we are doing we are initially storing all the values uh, in this uh, vector vector of values we are storing all the values here initially by traversing this whenever the solution or the head is initialized okay then each time for random call what we are doing we are taking the size of the these values and we are returning rand modulus n rand uh, function modulus n so it will produce all the result from starting from 0 up till what up till n minus 1 simple as it is by taking modulus with n so yeah this is how by taking a rand function we will get a random value and it will also uh, generate values from this range 
so we won't be out of the bound for these values and the second thing is each element will have equal probability because we are using inbuilt rand function got everything a uh, till here is uh, cleared okay not talking about the time and space complexity for the approach so this as you can see that here we are traversing all the nodes so time complexity here this will take big o of n and this will take time complexity big o of 1 okay so we are not traversing any node here so yeah, this will take to big o of 1 time complexity this function and this uh, function will take big o of n time complexity and space complexity here would be big o of n as we are storing all the nodes in this vector values so that's why the space complexity is big o of n now if you look at the follow up question here at the bottom you can see that what if the linked list is extremely large and its length is unknown to you what if the length is unknown to you and the second thing is can you use uh, this efficiently without using extra space okay see, so here um, we have known values say values are known so the size is also known okay in this approach and it will also take an extra space of big o of n right values are also known size is also known and it also take an extra space but can we solve this uh, if we don't know these things yeah we can solve this and that is one uh, one uh, or uh, one algorithm to solve this question so guys it's okay that if you don't know this reservoir sampling uh, uh, algorithm it's not that popular algorithm so many of you guys might don't know this but it's okay nothing to worry we will go through the complete algorithm in this video so yeah i have written some of the points of the reservoir sampling algorithm these are the facts these are the facts that you must know before uh, going to the approach so this reservoir sampling algorithm what is this technique it is to it is a technique to select k elements from n elements and n can be extremely large numbers or large number of streams so whenever you have something uh, uh, where n where n is large or n is unknown see uh, in a stream of data you don't know the size of the stream right it is a continuous stream of data continuous data stream we don't know the, its size and it it is very large and it is unknown so in that case if you want to find a rare a random number from this n stream that is large and unknown then we can use this technique of reservoir sampling it is built for this type of scenarios only okay we can use the reservoir sampling technique where the size is unknown and size is very large okay so as each element in the stream arises, it is either discarded or added to a reservoir of equal probability okay now what does this statement tells so let's say this is uh, your stream let me name it as stream stream has many numbers from one up to n okay so many numbers right now uh, here one is what reservoir okay this is reservoir so for each number let's say this number you have two probabilities either to discard it or add to reservoir or add this so whenever you add it you will add here okay so as each element in the stream arise so as the elements in the streams are added you have two choices either to discard or add to reservoir okay here two choices and this is done with equal probability okay i will also explain you what is equal probability here in this question yeah i uh, just wait for it now the third point is if the element is added to reservoir uh, previously selected elements is invicted from the reservoir with equal probability so this statement tells that at a time only one element can be there in the reservoir at only one element and if a new element is selected the previous element is discarded okay got it now the fourth point by maintaining a reservoir with an equal probability of any element being selected so here the element that is discarded is discarded also or invicted or discarded from the reservoir with equal probability and also added element is has the equal probability so both discarding and adding is done at equal probability so this technique ensures that each element in the stream is has equal probability okay uh, and and we don't need to know the size of the stream also so yeah this techniques work for here now uh, now uh, okay now let me uh, ask you one simple question let's say you have uh, up till n balls and now i ask you to select any one random ball from it so what is the uh, probability of selecting the random ball it is 1 by n okay each ball has uh, selecting one ball from this n balls the probability is 1 by n okay so yeah we just need to maintain this we just need to select an element from each element with a probability of 1 by 1 each element has this probability and we just have to maintain this simple as it is so yeah by taking that in mind and by applying these facts of the reservoir sampling algorithm we will move towards the approach see in the reservoir sampling algorithm we we don't know n okay so what we have to do we have to traverse each node each node all the time uh, whenever the random function is called so whenever this function is called we have to travel all the node 
If we don't know the size of the node, so we have to traverse all the node. Okay. For each node, we have to decide whether we to include or not. So as the second point tells, um, so whenever the data a new uh, element arises in the data stream, we have two options: either the discarded or the added. And what is our answer? The last included element in the reservoir is the answer. Okay. The third point says says that that the previously element uh, is evicted, that is discarded from the reservoir with the equal probability whenever you add something new. So yeah, the last added element or the node in the reservoir is the answer. Okay, simple as it is. So yeah, now let me show you the code for this. Here uh, initially we took one variable head node just to store the head of the linked list. And yeah, whenever the get random function is called, we will traverse all the nodes starting from the head node. Okay. Here we have this thing: random modulus length equal equal to zero. Now you might have question: What is this thing? This thing, this if condition will decide. This if condition will decide whether we have to discard it or to add it, add to the reservoir. Now on what what is this condition? Rand modulus len equals equals to zero. What does this mean? This means that see our length is what length is the is the data stream length of the data stream or length of uh, this linked list here. Now the length is increasing starting from one initially it is one then two then three then four up till n. Okay up till n we are taking this uh, length. Okay, up till all the elements. Now, whenever this, when when will this condition be satisfied? This condition will be satisfied when this, when this value will be multiple of length, multiple of this length. So let's say if length is uh, three and we get random as six, then six modulus three equals to zero because six is a multiple of three. So whenever this rand function will give a multiple of that length, then our value would be zero. Okay, and why we are taking multiple of that length? Because the because the probability would be what probability one by what one by length, because we have each has equal probability. Let's say we have three elements, then uh, we can either choose zero, one, or two. And probability of each is what one by three, and that's why uh, here we are trying to make the same thing. We are trying to make the probability one by length, and that's why we are doing. Whenever the uh, we found a multiple of that length, we uh, add to our reservoir. Okay, and every time we found this thing, we update it. We remove the last. This is a re result. Or this reservoir variable will get updated. Simple as it is. We are then we are incrementing the length and pointing the time to the next uh, node. Okay. So yeah, got this. Uh, how this will work? And at the end we will return the result or the last node included in the reservoir. Simple as it is. So yeah, I hope you guys understood that the algorithm as well as based on the algorithm our approach. So yeah, this was some. Uh, this was one uh, approach that uh, if you don't know, then it is it, it, you won't get it right. You have must initially know the reservoir sampling algorithm, and if you uh, know that, then only you can come to this approach. Okay. Now talking about the time and space complexity. So here the this function will take time of v go of one, and this function uh, will take. Uh, uh, so yeah, let me write it as again. This will take time of v go of one, and this will take time. Uh, time of v go of n because each time we are traversing all the n node. So for all the uh, all the calls of this random function call we are doing b go of n for all, every time okay so our overall time complexity here would be b go of n into a uh, number of random sample function calls okay now how many times this function will be called that many times uh, we have to make uh, this complete uh, loop to run and our space complexity here is b go of 1 so yeah it is beneficial in the terms of space complexity but in the time complexity if you see that it is not that good the above approach will take we go of n times only once only when we are initializing and for each uh, function call we are only taking big of one time complexity so this was better in terms of time complexity but when uh, the uh, n is very much large and n is unknown you can go with the above approach this approach will only work when n is large and unknown so yeah that's all for this video uh, if you guys have any feedback for me to improve in the way I teach to you, so yeah, then make sure you let me in the comment section. And if you have any doubts related to this question, then also do let me in the comment section. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.